Welcome to another Lion's Table. Doing greater things. We begin to live in his kingdom. We've been talking about going what we have been called to do and even greater things. Yes, in that living made righteous and alive in Christ, we already are beginning to live in his kingdom, though we are yet in a fallen world. Amen. Doing what we've been called to do and even greater things. Folks, the truth of the gospel, the good news, that is Jesus Christ, begins with you. And you hearing the good news. Paul said when he was in Corinth, I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with persuasion, persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. 1 Corinthians 2. Uh, 2, 3 through 5. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1 says, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. 1 Corinthians 2, 13 says, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. Amen. And 1 Corinthians 4.20, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Yes, a matter of power. You know that when God made his promise to Abraham... Since he had no one greater to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply your descendants. And so Abraham, after waiting patiently, obtained the promise. Hebrews six thirteen through 15 You know, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this he brought glory to God, Romans four twenty. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, Galatians 3.29. Romans 9.8 says, says this, In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. Amen. Galatians 3.18, For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on a promise, but God freely granted it to Abraham through a promise. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith, Romans 4.13. Again, clearly God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. And that's from Romans 4.13. You know, folks, faith comes by hearing, not by sight. Why? Because he alone is immortal and dwells in unapproachable light. No one has ever seen him, nor can anyone see him. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but in God, who richly provides all things for us to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, and to be generous and ready to share. 1 Timothy 6, 16-18 Our hope is in the Lord, and in Him we have eternal life. That is His promise. Even now, as we live in that promise, we live a kingdom life. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Folks, we do not offer, nor never have offered, political advice here on the Lions Table. But as a member of a free nation, we do encourage you to vote this coming election day. A free nation is only free because the people in, in it love freedom and respect life. We read in God's Word, which is Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. We have been born again in Christ the Lord. We who have been born again in Christ the Lord can appreciate the you here in Jeremiah as the plural use of the pronoun you. So we put our trust in God as a nation, knowing that we have been set apart, appointed to be salt and light in this fallen world. And uh, 
you know, as we have this election day, there are people that put all their hope in politics and put their hope in uh, in in uh, in what it force violence, whatever it may be. The man's book, wisdom. Man's wisdom. But we can only put our hope in Christ. That's our only real hope, because in the end, at, at the end, that's the only hope that anyone actually has. Everything else is temporal and temporary, and not permanent. So. While you while you should put uh, place your vote for your uh, the candidate of your choice, based on the principles of uh, that that the Lord's taught us, uh, ultimately your 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 greatest hope should be in Christ alone. Amen. Well, that's all we have for you on this on this uh, Reformation. Well, not for Reformation Day, but almost Reformation it Day. It was yesterday. It was yesterday, but All Saints Day. Uh, we thank you for joining us, and we hope this has been a blessing to you. Please join us again next time.